Hello, and welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this example, we will look at normal extrusions and compare the hyperbolic and algebraic extrusion methods. Starting with a surface mesh on what could be a blade antenna or a simple symmetric finite wing with a flat tip. The domains are constructed with an OH topology. We have an O mesh wrapping around the wing and we fill in the tip with an H mesh, thus the OH topology. I'm going to start by selecting all of my domains and then go to Create Extrude Normal. Now you'll see that Pointwise has combined the domains into two faces. You can see this demonstrated in the table. There's a single O mesh that wraps around the wing and the H mesh. Now, if you like the topology, you can simply select Done and move on to setting your attributes. But to demonstrate how you can create the faces yourself, I'm going to click on Assemble Special, and then I'm going to delete the existing faces. And for this example, I will create an upper and a lower face on the wing. I'll select the upper wing and the upper tip. Hit Save. I'll repeat this for the lower side, again, taking the lower wing domain and the tip. Hit Save. And then finally, the H mesh. Now we see in the table that we have three faces. So we can select Done. And now we see the surface domain displayed with the normals pointing outward, which is the direction we want to extrude our mesh. So we don't have to change the direction. We'll go to the Boundary Conditions tab. The only boundary condition we have to set is on the symmetry plane. And the edge is outlined in red. We'll select all the edges, go to the drop down menu, which defaults display, and change it to constant Z. Now I'll have to click on the set boundary condition button for the selection to take effect. And you'll see that these white anchor points show on the boundary to show that the boundary condition has been set. Now we'll go to the attributes tab. And I'm going to set my initial spacing to 10 to the minus fifth. I'm going to change my growth rate to 1.2. You can see under the extrusion method that hyperbolic is the default and algebraic is an option, but we'll start with hyperbolic. Below that, we have the smoothing options for the hyperbolic extrusion. There's explicit and implicit smoothing. There is a Kinsey bar smoothing, which is off by default and is only needed for concave regions. And there is a volume smoothing parameter, which determines how rapidly the grid clustering in the front will relax. We'll come back to this parameter. But for now, we'll leave all of these at the default settings. And now we'll go to our Run tab, enter our number of steps, and click Run. Now what you'll notice is that the front tends to expand out more quickly at the tip. This is to accommodate the front from the H mesh. And it results in this somewhat bulbous shape outer domain. To address this, we will click back to reset the extrusion, go to our Attributes tab, and set the volume smoothing off by setting it to zero. Now we'll go back to the Run tab, click Run, and now we'll see that we have a much more uniform offset distance along the entire wing. Now another result of using the hyperbolic extrusion is that during the solution of the partial differential equations, Grid lines tend to cluster towards the high curvature, and this can be seen on the symmetry plane domains, where the offset distance is much smaller at the leading and trailing edges. Now, one of the nice features of hyperbolic grid generation is the orthogonality. And as we zoom into the tip, we can see that the orthogonality from the surface extending far out into the block. Another feature is the smoothness of the resulting grid. If we select an outer domain and examine length ratio in J, which is in the spanwise direction, we can see that we have very low stretching along the entire domain. Now let's go back and select Algebra Extrusion from the drop-down, and you'll notice now that we have relaxation settings. We have relaxation coefficients to control the marching direction and step size, as well as number of iterations for a Laplace-style filter to be applied at each step. But like before, I'm going to start with the default settings, go to the Run tab, and click Run. You will notice that we get a very uniform offset distance around the entire wing, which is evident when we highlight the symmetry plane domains. Now let's look at the outer domain again and examine length ratio in J. The algebraic extrusion tends to extend the surface clustering out into the far field. 
and you can see that we have some rather large stretching near the tip. So this is where the relaxation factors come into play. So let's go back and I'm going to set my coefficients to 1. And I'm also going to increase the number of iterations for the PLOS filter, both on the direction and step size. Now go back to the Run tab, click Run. We'll save that result. And now as we look at the outer domain, we can see that the clustering has been greatly reduced. Let's select that outer domain and go back in and examine the length ratio in J. And now you can see that the stretching has been greatly reduced and we have a much smoother distribution as we go out over the tip. Now the algebraic extrusion does not enforce the orthogonality like the hyperbolic extrusion. And we can see this near the tip. But you can run the elliptic solver to improve the orthogonality. Now that you've seen both normal extrusion methods, you can choose the one that best suits your needs. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop us a line down below or connect with us via LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.